Okay, this is uh, this is live. This is weird. All right, um, this is the first time I've ever done a live stream before, so I don't know exactly what's happening over there. I think it's okay. Um, uh, <laughs> as usual, I did no notification whatsoever, and so we'll see how many people uh, come on board. But um, yeah, this is uh, okay. Let's get started. Um, let's move that out of the road. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do today is uh, we're gonna make a, a very, very simple uh, tic-tac-toe game using wind forms. And um, we're gonna do that using Visual Studio 2019. I have Visual Studio 2019 uh, open here. And I'm saying and a lot. So I'm gonna create a new project. Um, I'm going to grab this here. This is the folder I'm going to use. And uh, I want to use a Windows Form application in C Sharp. And I'm going to click on Next. And it's going to be called Tic Tac Toe or Knots and Crosses if you're in the UK. Uh, and the location is I'm going to paste that in there. It's going to be called Tic Tac Toe and it's going to use the latest and greatest framework. All good. Let's go and create that. Um, and so yeah, the reason why I'm, I'm thinking about tic-tac-toe is because it's a fairly common game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, you basically, let me get a bit of paper here. Um, so if I grab a bit of paper and a pen. So what you do is you draw a, a hash mark. Um, like this so you draw hash mark i'm doing this backwards and to the side this way here oh dear that's awful let me do it this way so what you do is you draw a hash mark uh, on a page like that and then players take it in turn and you put in an x for the first player so the first player they're going to write an x in the center there and then the next player is going to write uh like an o here oh dear <laughs> and i'm trying to watch it mirrored and all this kind of stuff um and the idea is that you if you get three in a row uh anyway three in a row or three in a column or three diagonally as well uh then you win the game and so that's tic-tac-toe um, and <clears throat> so i'm hoping that the as this is the first stream and this is the reason why i'm doing it is it won't take too long to do um <clears throat> so if i bring this back over here so i have an idea of what i what i want to do uh the first thing is i want to separate i don't want to um have the ui and the the game logic smooshed together so i want to keep that separate um and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to create a tic-tac-toe engine class so i'm going to go down here and do go add new item and by default it's going to choose class which is right and I'm going to choose tic tac to engine uh, and that's going to create my, my first class and then in the form uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create nine buttons each for one of the the, the, uh, the values in there so I'm going to go to the toolbox and uh, I'm going to search for button and I'm going to drag that out there. Um, and make it some kind of size. It doesn't really need to be too big. Um, but uh, let's let's give this... So first of all, the text inside it... Oops. Sorry, let me do that all over again. Okay. So this is <laughs> this is the Windows form. Uh, there you go, completely screwed that up. All right, one second, let me go back to that. So I want to do a tic-tac-toe engine. So I'm gonna go in here and do add new item and it's gonna auto-select class and then I'm gonna choose tic-tac-toe engine and that's gonna create my class. And then in the Windows form, I'm gonna create nine buttons that are gonna be exactly the same. So I'm gonna to go to toolbox 
I'm just going to do a search for button and then I'm going to drag that button out to here and it's going to create like a default size button. So I'm going to um, go down to the properties and you'll see that size is, is down here and I'm going to choose 180 by 180. Uh, and then the text I'm just going to have is X just now. And then I'm going to change the font size as well. So the font is going to be, uh, let me choose something that's kind of nice. Well, let's try Comic Sans. That's always a good fun, fun one to have. So I can type in Comic Sans MS. And then the size of it, uh, if we make that 72, it's probably plenty big enough. There you go. So there's the, there's the X for that. Okay. And I don't seem to have snapping on, but that's okay. So the, uh, that's the, the button there. So let's just call this uh, grid button. And I'm going to do copy paste. And then that's going to create a new one. So that's just control C, control V. And then I can do control V just to paste out these ones here. Like that. So, and like that. Hello. I should have worn my glasses. <laughs> uh, hey, sheepy. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, that's really the kind of UI. Uh, we also want like a new game button as well. So let's just copy and paste that in there. So we'll have like a new game button up here somewhere. Um, and we'll call this new game. And the text will have a new game. Of course, that's far too big. So, well, the, the font size is far too big. Um, so let's bring the font size down just a little bit. Uh, let's bring it down to 36. There you go. There's a new game there. Okay, so it's starting to kind of shape up uh, into what we want it to look like. So the idea will be like as you as as the the, the current player. In fact, let's have a uh, let's set out the other part of it there. So if we go to here and then type in group, so we get a group box. Drag that in there. Then again, let's change the font as well to Comic Sans. Um, I think as well, if you change the default font on here, it changes it for all subsequent controls. Actually, let's try that. Let's do that. So if we go to here, it, so we click on the form itself and then go to font and then change that to Comic Sans and we'll make that 36. Yeah, see, it does change it there. Aha. Well, that just broke everything. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> that was a bad move. Okay. Um, all right, where were we? Group. Okay, so we want group box in here. And then this is going to be um, Comic Sans. And we'll make this 24. It's a good size. So you can see it's group box. Blah. And for this one, we can say um, this is going to be, sorry, the text is way down here. Let me just move this up to here. I think I can dock it up the top. Um, so let's change the text of this to say um, current player. So we change the current player. And let's make it the same size as this one here. And then inside here, we're going to have a, another control and we're going to call, we're going to make this one a label. Drag it into here and we'll make this one big. So this is going to be X because this is the first player. Um, and we want to make that font just a little bit bigger. So we'll make it 72. So that is about right. Okay. And then we can center these two on the 
uh, on the X so it looks like it's all set up nice. All right, I think that's uh, all we need to do for the, the form. Uh, the next thing is we should uh let's have it starting so windows there and then start position we want to do, to put it in the center of the screen so we click on center screen there so now when we play um, play the game when we press play on here it will compile and take its sweet time uh, and now we have our, our game. So you can see you can click things on here and click new game uh, and everything starts. So that is good. Okay. Um, so we want um, we want a controller for this, which will just make the form. Um, but we want to kind of separate the the we want to separate out the the logic for tic-tac-toe as well um all right so first things first when we go to view code uh we've got initialize component and then we'll have initialize game board um and i think that's all we need to do in there um and then for the game board um we need to have references to these objects here so this is going to be like the the first one second one third one so on so i think i think we can call these all the same thing maybe no um it's been a while since i've done this to be honest um Okay, I don't mind calling it that one. So button, let's call this button zero. So this is button zero, button one, button two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So inside the code here, um, initialize game board. So I'm going to do um, control period, and I'm going to click on generate that. So it's going to create a new uh, board for me. Now I need to have um, private. Uh, I can make this an array because I know how many it's going to be. So I'm going to make it a button array equals new button, um, and it's going to be nine. Oh, I'm going to call this uh, grid, and then I am going to say. Uh, I need to go through all the, the grid items. Actually, I don't need to do grid equals that. Uh, let me change that to there. So I'm going to say grid equals new button array. And then it's going to be button zero, button one, button two, button three, button four, button five. Button six, seven, button eight. Okay, so that is our new buttons there. And I'm going to say grid for each. I think I can use length here. No, that's not working. Why is that not working? Um, okay. Um, button text equals and then empty because we don't want to. Well, well, it's okay for us to have, you know, a debug. I keep going to that because I keep thinking I'm, I'm going to Unity. Oh, the problems. Um, uh, 
uh, we want them to be blank when we actually play it. Uh, we also don't want them to be clickable as well. So inside our form, we're also going to do a um, private void disable buttons, or actually be toggle enabled for each bar button in grid button dot oops enabled equals fall equals enabled um, and so what this is going to do is um, we're going to initialize the game board and the game board is going to create an array of all these buttons in here and that's going to make figuring things out a little bit easier. Uh, then um, we are going to set all the text values to uh, nothing. And then, actually we can just do that inside here. We can just do button.enabled equals false. And that will disable them. And we'll use toggle in just a second. So when we run this, um, the only thing that should be enabled, there we go, is new game. So the only thing that's enabled is new game. Um, and that's good. So now that new game's enabled, we need to start thinking about um, the, the actual class itself. So we need public void new game. Public void um, place, and then it's going to be int player ID. Uh, actually, it's just going to be place int grid ID. Um, public int is victory so what what does all this do so new game is going to set everything up uh, place is going to put the current value in the grid uh, at a position so when you put an x it's going to put in whatever the player is we're going to have three things. So we're going to have um, zero for nothing set, one for the first player, two for the second player. And is victory is going to return one for the first player, two for the, the second player, or minus one or zero for it's the game still in play or minus one for cat's game. And cat's game is when, um, I'm not sure what it's called in America actually, but um, when you can't make any, when no player can make any moves, the board's filled, but no one wins. So think war games. Hello, Professor Falcon. That kind of thing. If you've ever seen war games, <clears throat> I don't know why my voice went for it here. So this is going to be returns minus one if uh, cat's game. Turn zero if still playing. Returns one if player one wins. Returns two if player two wins. And then place is just going to be mark the current player's entry in the grid ID. And then new game is going to be initialize board set current player to one. Okay. So this is going to be private int current player equals one, private 
int uh, grid equals new grid and there's nine nine items in the grid new int uh, so initialize board is going to be easy so that's going to be for each uh, for int i equals zero i less than nine i plus plus grid i equals zero so that's initializing the board so everything in the board initializes it to zero so if you're not familiar with this uh, with a for loop again this this is sort of for beginners or at least i don't know people who are new to c sharp so i'm going to try and try to explain uh, as i go on uh hey roy uh yeah i am actually working from home um so our work has um uh, we've closed all the offices and and so we're all working from home so it's good that we actually have the capability of working from home when we need to so uh it's the first time the entire company <clears throat> has worked from home but we're all kind of coping so it's it's not uh, it's not too bad um it does get a bit lonely uh, i gotta say i mean although I'm, you know i have i'm living with my family um when you when you work during your your when you go to work you interact with different people and so i kind of miss that but uh, i kind of miss the commute as well kind of decompress and all that kind of stuff i don't really get a decompress just walking upstairs but Anyway, thank you for asking. Um, how are you guys coping with uh, with this lockdown? Um, but it's not. Um, and then we set the, the current player to one. So current player equals one. So mark the current player's entry in the grid ID. So um, the way we do that is we're gonna do grid, uh, grid ID. Uh, equals current player current player plus one if current player equals three current player equals one so we're just going to reset it to to one so you start off in one you go to two if it goes to three then we put it back to to one uh and then is victory will come back to later on so for this one here, um, we're going to have um, private um, string uh, tokens, new string, and then the tokens are going to be x and o just checking the chat again <laughs> maybe <laughs> i might be able to get it done quicker um yeah uh uh i'm not i'm my plan is to get it done as quickly as possible i know it's uh <laughs> it's not the most uh, uh visual of of games um i i never played it the the first time this is atari's adventure i never played it uh which is this game here um i never played it uh when i was a kid and uh i picked it up recently and it's it's a really cool game it's a it's like the first uh, ever graphic adventure and, and it spawned things like attic attack and even even uh, the, the first zelda as well you can see sort of little nuggets of, of the first zelda in there and i kind of like that it's like this prototype version of those games that came much much later uh, and it was a great way to do things like the colossal cave adventure that you couldn't do on an atari because i mean it had like you know you were basically racing the beam so i i liked it i think it's a nice challenge i know it's not everyone's cup of tea um, but there's kind of nuggets that, and I try and uh, put everything, I try and make things interesting in, in the videos that I do for these things. So it's not just, Hey, I'm making an Atari remake. I'm also trying to do other techniques as well. 
Um, so hopefully you do find something interesting in there. I know it's uh, not the one that you're looking for. I know there's Defender is coming. Um, and I've done a test for that and it works super well, the, the, the screen wrapping. Uh, so that is coming. Um, but that will be the next one is Defender. I promise it will be the next one. But uh, yeah, we just need to get through the Atari one. This this thing here I'm doing just now is just because yeah, we're all stuck inside and I just thought I'd make a, a game for uh, for funsies. Anyway, um, okay, so that's the, the, the token there. Um, when we hit this button here, oh yeah, we need to set up the, the grid as well for this. So um, for... So for each button, we're also going to add an on click, and that on click is going to um, pass in an index value to the game engine. So we need to create an instance of the game engine here. So this is a, our game engine. We need to go to our form. Uh, let me get rid of this here. And then we do private tic tac toe engine equals new that to engine we don't need anything else there and then um, for this one here we're gonna say button dot uh, click plus equals and then it's gonna be um, o e um, and uh, we're going to pass that into um, make move index. And we don't have an index, but we will have a second bar index equals zero. Index plus plus. And we will create a make move here. Um, so make move index and then inside here we're going to have engine dot um, what is that oh actually we need to pass in uh, the button as well um, so that is going to be uh, O as button so every time so what's happening here is we're going to add a click event so every time you click on a when you click on a button uh, it passes in the sender and event args. So for the, the event args are just additional information that you want to pass in with this event. So when you click on a button, what happens? The first one is the object, for me, which is always sender. It's always object sender. So it, we don't know what type it is. However, we do know what type it is because it's a button. So the button click will always pass in button as the object sender. So I'm casting it here just to a button. Uh, I'm using the as because as uh, the, when you use the word as, it will try and cast it to button and if it fails, it returns null. I know for a fact it will be null, it will be a button. So I don't need to worry about that. I also want to pass in the index. And the reason why is because I want to make the move, uh, what's it called, uh, place, and it's going to be the index, and then I want to say b dot enabled equals false. Um, but I also want to set the the token on that button to be the current token. So I want to say b dot text equals. Oh, we need a current token, don't we? Uh, private int current token equals zero. Text equals tokens current token, and then I want to say current token plus plus, and then I want to say current token mod equals two. Okay, so what does all this do? So current token is going to be zero or one, and that's going to relate to this zero. This is the zeroth entry in this array, and this is the first entry in this array. And uh, I'm going to take that, whatever zero or one it is, and I'm going to place it as the text 
of the button. I'm then going to increment the, the current token. So now it's either going to go from zero to one or one to two. If it goes from one to two, if it goes to two, then this line here will then mod it with two, which means it will return the remainder. And the remainder means that it will, if it is two, it will become zero. If it's one, it will stay as one. Uh, then we want to place, um, we want to tell the engine we're placing a token at that index and we want to disable the button. Okay. Uh, that's all we need to do for that one there so far. And then for new game, um, I think I have a new game here. So I can double click that and we'll create, If once you double click a button, it creates a, a click event. So the new game is going to be engine.newGame. And then it's going to be toggle true. So this is going to make all the buttons available. And then what I want to do is I want to say uh, new game dot enabled equals false because I don't want to I don't want the player to keep hammering away at the 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 new game button. Uh, and I must stop doing that. Okay. So. Um, well, there was mistakes, mistakes, no. Oh yeah, okay, so let's do return minus one. Uh, actually, let's do return zero, because then it is still playing. All right, so press F5 there. All right, so here we go, so we have our game. Um, so the current player is X, so if I press new game, so you can choose anywhere on the grid, so I'm gonna click on here. And it is going to say out of range. So grid ID is nine. Uh, why is grid ID nine? Well, let's go find that out. So we've got our um, call stack down here. So we can go through the call stack and we can find out what happened here. So index is nine. And this came from in here. Index is nine. Why is index nine? How is that possible? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. If I did, I don't know if this will work. Oh, there you go. So that one there, and then I choose that one there, and this one here, and you can see that we're now alternating between the two. So that is good. Okay. Um, so that's good. Um, we can also make it, well, I could make them labels as well, but eh, it's fine. Buttons are fine. So yeah, it didn't seem to like the index plus plus here. I didn't like that there, but it seems to like it here. Okay, so must be some quirk with these, this closure here, maybe? I don't know. Uh, it seems to be working now anyway. So. Uh, all right, so new game. So we've got X, O, X, O, X. So we need to find out uh, if the player has won or not. Oh, we also need to change the current player to, to be that as well. So uh, form one, this is, what is this called? This is going to be called current player. Okay. And so we go back to form one there. So anytime they, they click on that, we want to make the move. Um, so we want to say current player dot text equals uh, tokens current token so now current token at this point is going to be the one that the player has is placing and then the current token at this one is going to be the new token so it's going to flip between x's and o's so we run this again new player so currently x so press x so now it becomes o x O and so on. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, 
So now we need a winning condition. So the winning condition is going to be um, uh, we want to count on the grid. So we want to see if there's an empty space. So I'm going to have a private bool has empty slot. Um, and then we're going to say for each var i in grid, if i equals zero, count plus plus, var count equals zero, return count greater than zero. So we're going to run through all the items in the grid, which is this array up here. And then we're going to check to see if the, uh, the item in the grid is zero. And if it is, that means it's an empty slot. I'm going to add one to this count value. And then if count is greater than zero, that means there is an empty slot there. So, um, we want to check to see if player one wins or player two wins. So I'm going to say if player one victory uh, return one, else if player two victory, uh, actually player victory I'm going to change that to one and I'm going to change that to two. Uh, that one, else if has empty slot, return minus one, otherwise return zero. So if the, if the first player wins, then return one. If the second player wins, return two. Uh, if there isn't an empty slot, then we're going to return minus one, in other words, it's a cat's game. Um, otherwise, we're going to return zero, which is what all that is. So returns one if that is that. Uh, that one there. This is why it's kind of it's a good idea to write these things down. The other, the other way to do it is to use uh, test-driven uh, development. Uh, test-driven development is uh, when you, you start with nothing and you write a unit test, it fails because you haven't written that thing. You write, then write that little bit of code, you do another test to do another part of it, and you keep going until eventually you build it up there. Um, this is a alternative way to do it where you, you write what you want it to do and then you go ahead and code it. Um, so I don't have a player victory just now so I'm going to uh, do command period and hit return again. Um, ah right okay so for the output it's it's all done in um, uh, it's all done in Windows Forms. So when you start the, the, the project inside Visual Studio, uh, just choose Win Forms, and this will allow you to, to drag and drop these um, uh, shapes. So you get buttons, and uh, there's a, a grid a group box here, and a label here. Um, and then when you press play, um, <laughs> you get an error. Uh, return false. Um, and so everything's done inside this one editor. So you've got your UI inside here, and then you've got your code in here as well. But the nice thing though is because the way that I'm writing this engine, we can then go and make a Unity version of it, which I'll do after I take a break. So um, that's that was my plan was to do a Windows WinForm version of it, and then do a um, a Unity version of it. But like I said, I'm going to take a little break and then go into the Unity version. All right, so player IDs. So this is going to be player 
Uh, let's just call it ID. Um, and then this one is a bit howdy doody, but I'm going to say if grid zero equals ID and grid zero uh, one equals uh, ID and grid two equals ID um, return true. Now, somebody, I remember doing this before, and somebody posted up that this is not a good way to do it, and there's actually a much easier way to do it. Um, but I can't for the life of me remember what way it is. So I apologize to whoever uh, came up with it, but this is this is what I've got. Um, so uh, this is grid, these grids here. Um, but we also need the other two rows as well. Um, so this is going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we also need uh, the columns. So those columns are going to be 0, 3, 6, 1, 4, 7, and then finally 2, 5, and 8. that copy that copy that and then we need the two diagonals as well so i'm going to go and grab this one here uh, and that one there so the two diagonals are going to be uh, zero four and eight or uh, two four and six two four and six turn false so player victory all of that is going to be our so this here is our rows this here is our columns and this here is our diagonals so if the player wins then we're going to know about it um okay so if the player wins um so we're going to make a move there and then we're going to say if engine dot uh, actually let's just grab that there so anytime you make a move that's when it's that's when the engine is going to check to see or that's when we're going to check the engine to see if the player has won so we're going to say var winner equals engine dot um is victory if winner is not equal to zero, if winner equals minus one um, then it's gonna be a cats game uh, else uh, winner is winner minus one so the reason why i'm doing my winner minus one is because the winner minus one is the x or the or the o and our x and o is not one or two it is zero and one so we need to shift it down one so we've got cats game and we get winner is so i'm going to create another method in here So cat's game, uh, I want to enable the new game. So I'm going to say uh, new game dot enabled equals true. And I need to do that for both of them. And then um, inside form one, let's change that. Um, winner box or player box, I'm going to call it player box. Um, 
is where the winner is, and then this will be ID. And I want to toggle all the, the, I want to disable everything else, just in case there's one enabled, which is probably not, well, I mean, it might be because you could win the game and still have blank spaces. So you don't want to be able to, to, to do anything else with it. Uh, and then the winner is that one. So I'm going to say um, message box show congratulations. Um, and I can use interpolation in here and I can say um, winner wins. And winner is tokens ID. So it's whatever the, the current token is. Uh, and then here I can say message box dot show cats game. Wamp wamp. No winner. And I think that's it. I think that's uh, that is tic tac toe. So let's see if this works. So let's uh, win a game. So I'm going to do X. Oh, well, there you go. Well, it shouldn't have been winner. Oh, that is no winner. Oh, why did that come back as minus one? I check the chat. I think there is a math formula. <laughs> uh, I just don't know it. Let me check and see if there is one. Um, formula. Tic tac toe victory. at it later. Uh, all right, so why is this coming into uh, here? So F10, so this is, has empty slots. So grid will contain that. Okay, so for each of that, I'm going to do so this is going to return count is greater than that. So F10 um, Turn zero. Uh, right, okay, that's why. Else, if winner is greater than zero, that's all. Okay. New player, that's a great point there. Uh, so do that one. And then this one should win. And it did not. Well, that is no good. Why did that not win? What have, what have I screwed up here? Uh, you know what? I can just return true for that. Uh, zero, one, two. Okay, let me try that again. 
new game, blah, blah, blah. and then this one here is going to be the X. Blah. So grid one, two, one, two, one. Um, that's not right. Oh, that is definitely not right. I think the grid, I think the buttons are in the wrong grid place. So this is, this should be grid ID zero. Yeah. Um, that is not one. No, these are all wrong. Why is this all wrong? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yet, Where am I going here? What am I there? Um, this doesn't look right. Why do New game zero? So zero is right. <laughs> I'll get zero. One. Two. What is going on here? Three. Hmm. Button and grid. Zero. I've got a funny feeling that this is actually happening when you click the button. This is insane. Um, so I think what's happening is this index value is getting added at the same time as this. So I'm going to say var... Um, so can I do a copy of it in here? Bar index copy equals index. And then um, do that. I think this I think what's happening is it's the the index is getting updated when you when you do the click. So that's grid ID zero. That's grid ID eight, yeah. It's that closure that was screwing things up. And so this should be the winning one. Boom, congratulations, X wins. All right, so new player. And we need to clear the, the board again. Okay, so yeah, this, closure thing here screwed everything up um all right so when we clear the board we need to we need to set everything else to be that as well so button text um so 
can set button text to be false as well. So we're going to say, um, so when we enable it, I just wonder if we want to enable it when, when you click on the new game, do we want to enable it so that it's, we pass in the values or do we just, uh, let's do, uh, if, if enabled button dot text equals that. So when we're, we refresh the game, when we start the game again, then uh, that'll reset, reset those values. So, oops, let me just do this here. So I'm gonna do a cat's game, or hopefully do a cat's game. Uh, oh, there you go, congratulations, it all wins. That's good. So we click on new game, it resets everything. Okay, so if we do X, O, X, O, X, X wins, new game. Oh, we need to reset the, the ID as well. Uh, that doesn't win. So we also need to reset the ID as well. So current player uh, is getting set to one, that's right. But we also need to do the same thing inside here as well, where we have current token is that. So um, I'm gonna do new game current token equals zero. And then uh, we need to do token, what's it called? Player, current player dot text equals tokens current token. So if a new game, and then this one here, we shouldn't get a winner. So let's check our tic-tac-toe game. So we go to here and we do this. So player one victory. Nope. Player two victory. Nope. Has an empty slot. Return minus one. Uh, winner is minus one. Cat's game. Cat's game. Okay. I think it gets screwed up because uh, the zero was in there. I think. Did I just close the live stream? Damn it. Did I? One second. Oops. I think I might have closed the live stream. Um. One second. How do I get back to the live stream? It says I'm still streaming. Run out of videos. Um, go live. Manage. Okay, no, we're still live. Sorry, I am. Um... <laughs> Sorry. Um... Okay, yeah, all right. So I think the problem was that the current player um, was screwing things up when, when it was checking because we pass in the ID, I guess. So click on new game anyway. So uh, let's, try, let's try and win the game. All right, X wins, new game. Let's try and get O to win. 
O wins. K. Difficult to, to not play to win X and then I want O. Oh, O1. Oh, Darn it. See what I mean? It's tricky. Um, and then I want X to go here and then O to go here and then X to go here. Cat's game. Okay. And then you game. And that's it. I think we're done. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there. Um, that's tic-tac-toe. Um, I don't know how long that took. Not long. Anyway, I'm going to take a short break anyway. Um, and, uh, I'm going to put this up on, on GitHub. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the code that we did for the, the tic-tac-toe engine, and then we'll do a Unity version of it sounds like fun. Uh, so I'll see you probably in about half an hour. So bye-bye. Oh, uh, sorry, before I go, <laughs> this is why I edit these videos at the end. Uh, I put the outros on at the end. Um, if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Uh, if you thought it was too weird, I can understand. It's my first live video. It's weird getting broadcast live. Your mind sort of freezes up more. Um, Anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. There's there's more videos and better videos than this one uh, on the channel. And uh, hit the notification bell and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. And I now have to figure out how to end the stream. Uh, thanks all for... Oh, by the way, thanks everybody for, uh, for watching the live stream. Uh, uh, it, it's been a nice conversation. Um... Anyway, I, uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.